I'd like to welcome you to this World Standards Day activity. We, every year we celebrate World Standards Day on the 14th of October. This year we are operating under the theme, a shared vision for a better world, advancing the national quality infrastructure. We have a brief program this morning where we will have sharing from our project partners on a dialogue for productivity and standards by Ms. Marina Suraj. Export St. Lucia will update us on the, the pro project with an enhancing the capacity of stakeholders in the agricultural sector. We'll also see an update from Standards and Tourism from the Ministry of Tourism. And one of the highlights of this activity would be the signing of the MOU between the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Agriculture on the full operationalization of the National Agricultural Diagnostic Facility as part of the implementation of our national quality policy. The main objective of this MOU is to cooperatively implement the national interagency compliance system to ensure the regulated products entering St. Lucian markets meet the technical regulations and the objectives of the National Agricultural Diversification Policy, the National Quality Policy, and the National Export Strategy. SLBS also wishes that you join with us in reaching another milestone as we have just this morning been officially informed that the SLBS Compliance Department has been approved by the Jamaica National Accreditation Agency in completing the assessment to ISO 17020 for our inspection programs. Okay. At this time, we would like to invite Ms. Marina Suraj to give us the dialogue on productivity and standards, after which we will have a speech, a recorded speech from the Minister for World Standards Day. And then we will move to Export St. Lucia, the Ministry of Tourism, and then the signing of the MOU. On behalf of the rest of the team at the NCPC, I wish to thank the Bureau of Standards for allowing us a voice in today's proceedings. It is without question that there is a clearly defined link between standards and productivity and the critical role in strengthening our local economy. Standardization is deemed a very important driver for productivity as it seeks to strengthen customer confidence and holds a business resolute to the cyc cyclical process of continuous improvement in the quality of its products and its services. This is a practice fully endorsed and encouraged by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, the NCPC. It is in this vein that the NCPC, in its promotion of this quality-minded culture, has designed and recently launched its business productivity measurement tool, the ProTool. We can all agree that continuous improvement assures that customers are satisfied by not only receiving products and services that meet their requirements, but also by way of consistency in the delivery of a business's performance. It is with that knowledge that the very design of the Pro Tool was guided by the ISO 9000 standard series which emphasizes increased business efficiency and spotlights customer satisfaction. With this, I now invite you to view a short video presentation which gives further insights into the features and characteristics of this unique business productivity measurement tool, the Pro Tool. I take this opportunity to commend the Bureau of Standards for the role that you play in the development and promotion of conformity to standards in our local landscape. And the NCPC lends its support to these efforts and looks forward to future collaborations as we collectively strive towards a more productive St. Lucia. I thank you for allowing me and please take a look at the video.
a vibrant private sector is pivotal to a nation's viability. Private sector businesses are central to the national recovery process, particularly in the wake of natural disasters or global crises, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Enhancing business productivity through improved data collection is part of the mandate of the NCPC. On a national level, the Pro Tool will provide insights into the challenges of the private sector, allowing the NCPC the opportunity to undertake actions and to engage in collaborative efforts with donor agencies and other partners in crafting remedial actions to bridge existing gaps. The former chairman of the NCPC described the Pro Tool as an undiscovered gem in need of exposure to inspire and impact many. So that when I came on board, that was one of the first things that I, I put on the table, that this Pro Tool needs to be dusted off, tidied up, modernized, updated, and rolled out to the private sector, because it is something that could be very useful in driving productivity and competitiveness in the private sector. The Pro Tool is an innovative productivity measuring tool developed by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. Harnessing the power of data for strategic decision making is at the heart of the Pro Tool. The Pro Tool is a web-based platform. It was designed for use across all economic activity areas by private sector businesses to help them monitor their productivity levels over a period of time. It is a very easy platform to use, it is user-friendly, and it, it, it will ensure that businesses, as they get into the practice of making database decisions, have this instrument that will become impactful for them over time. You need to plan for productivity, implement your productivity measures, and you need to check. And this is where the Pro Tool comes in. It is that tool that you can use to check your productivity level. And why is that important? Because productivity impacts your bottom line. Compete Caribbean Partnership Compete Facility provided the technical and financial support to convert the Excel-based version of the Pro Tool to the upgraded online platform. Uh, we've been really pleased with the, the progress and the outcome of that initiative. And we are happy to be at this stage where it's now going to be launched out to the business environment in St. Lucia more generally. And expecting it to play a really important role in helping firms diagnose their current productivity performance and then being able to set in place really measurable and results focused plans to improve that performance over time. But what is so innovative about the Pro Tool? How does it work? And what makes it a valuable tool to any business? The Pro Tool is a unique performance measurement tool, unlike any other measurement tool that we have being used by businesses in that it is not just analytical, it is also remedial. After the Pro Tool has assessed the performance of the business and it gives you a ranking on the various aspects of that business, it will highlight the deficiencies and it will also offer you ways and methods in which you can improve your processes to ensure that these deficiencies over time do not exist anymore for your business. So it allows you to improve so that your deficiencies are decreased. Basically with productivity in a business, you're saying I want more, more output for each unit of input. And if you're not measuring that, if you're not looking at that in some uh, way, some structured way, then, then you're not going to achieve it. You're not going to achieve greater productivity. The qualitative component of the Pro Tool was the component which I worked on. That component involved the assessment as well as the recommendations. So part of my assignment was to review the items as well as to review the recommendations. And by the way, that's a plus to that instrument in that you're not doing just a check, but you're also looking at the act to improve when the recommendations have been given. So for each item in the assessment, what we did was we referenced the international standard that it was aligned to. Development of the Pro Tool included robust testing among members of the business community in St. Lucia, including large, small and medium well, enterprises. 
suggestions for improvement and modification were taken on board to produce the updated version of the productivity measuring tool, Pro Tool. Now, my experience with Pro Tool is that it was actually uh, quite easy to use. Uh, the data that I had to input, uh, most of this was readily available from the, our internal records. And the, I found that the software was user-friendly. Um, the instructions were quite clear, so completing the process was by no means difficult. Here at Harris Baines, we pride ourselves on the quality of our products and level of customer service. Knowing our level of productivity is very important to us. The Pro Tool gives us the opportunity to measure both our qualitative and quantitative outputs. We at Harris Baines would certainly endorse the Pro Tool to any company. Whether you are a service-oriented business or your main activity involves the production of any type of commodity, your business productivity levels should be measured and monitored to help guide sound decision making for the growth and development of your business. The Pro Tool undoubtedly will be an invaluable instrument to provide assistance to all MSMEs on the journey to increase operational effectiveness and resilience. Thank you, Ms. Suraj and the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. At this time, we call on Ms. Nelsia Shalmine of Elk Sports in Lucia, who will give us an update on the collaborative project between Exports in Lucia and SLBS. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to adopt the protocol already established and share warm wishes from my CEO and the rest of the Export St. Lucia team. I'm Nelsia Shalmang. I'm the Public Relations Officer at Export St. Lucia. When we were invited to participate in today's World Standards Day event, we found it fitting to explain to you and to the public how standards play an important role in exports, which is what we facilitate at Export St. Lucia. So at Export St. Lucia, we are acutely aware of the importance of standards in exporting, and that includes the fact that they reduce barriers associated with trade and allow for access to new markets, which is what we really strive to do for our clients at Export St. Lucia. Additionally, for buyers, for consumers, both locally and in international markets, standards often signal that the product is of high quality, and that is really what we want. We do not want for buyers to be questioning that that locally produced items are not up to par with what their consumers are used to. Standards also increase business productivity and efficiency, as you would have heard from the NCPC, and they make producers more competitive by enhancing their status as a certified company. Now, we do this and we promote this by working hand in hand with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and to just explain a little bit about the role of SLBS in exporting is that they provide services like ensuring that barcodes, labeling, and packaging are up to standard before a shipment can be exported, as well as providing guidance on HACCP compliance for clients with production facilities. So for anyone who comes to Export St. Lucia looking to um, sell their products outside of our borders, we would have to direct them to SLBS and we are very grateful for that continued partnership and for the level of collaboration that we get from the SLBS. Additionally, all exporters must obtain a certificate of free sale and as many of you would know, this is available right here at the SLBS. And um, certain agriculture products require pack house certification in order to be exported and the SLBS provides that certification. Now this is a great segue into one of our ongoing partnerships and it is a project it's a, it's a bit of a mouthful, but titled Enhancing the Capacity of Stakeholders in the Agriculture Sector to Supply Quality Products in New Markets. And this project is funded by the EPA CSME Standby Facility and aims to make St. Lucian agricultural produce more competitive in international markets by ensuring that farms, farmers, and pack houses are certified in the relevant standards that will make them more attractive to outside buyers and to be able to enter markets such as Canada, the USA, and new markets in the European Union where we are not already exporting our products to. 
And we are doing this, Export St. Lucia is implementing this project with a host of local partners, including Lisa Avalos Community College and, of course, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. And the role of the Bureau of Standards in this project is to develop together with Sir Arthur Lewis Community College an online training program in GAP, GMP, and HACCP. And this um, online training program will be delivered to farmers across St. Lucia by the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. However, the SLBS is providing all of the requisite technical guidance for this component of the project, and for that, we are ever grateful. This project was launched back in July of this year, and since then, Export St. Lucia has been working with farmers to hit the ground running. We have visited pack houses, we have consulted with farmers, we have noted what needs to be done, and we are very excited to continue to work with the Bureau to ensure that over the next 18 months or so, that this project is completed, and not, not just completed, but completed successfully, resulting in new exports of St. Lucian agricultural products to new parts of the world. And um, that is the end of it. For any more information on this and on our co collaboration, you can visit our website at exportsinlucia.org. Okay, before we play the minister's address, we would take the standards and tourism, and we'll play the address just before we do the signing of the MOU. And Madam Minister, if you would want to bring any greetings, we would do that before we sign the MOU. Um, for persons who may not know, the, the minister was very instrumental in ensuring that the requisite budgetary support for NADAF was provided. And it, it, we, we do have financial constraints. And to be able to achieve the feat of getting that support was something which was very notable and we do anticipate the continued support in the coming budget at this time we will ask miss and margaret adams deputy permanent secretary for the ministry of tourism to make a presentation on standards and tourism coincidentally miss and margaret is also the chair of our tourism and related services technical committee i bring to you as well a warm welcome from the Ministry of Tourism. So I'd like to adopt the protocol that has already been established. Um, my presentation is basically to share with you our the marriage we've had between the Solution Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Tourism. Um, so over the last two decades, the Ministry has been actively involved in the development of standards in keeping with our objective of improving the quality of our product and of course ensuring that the tourism industry attains a very high level of um, competitiveness, customer satisfaction and also to ensure that it aligns with our vision for St. Lucia being the premise of providing a unique high quality um, tourism product. Of course enshrined in our tourism strategy is that the need for competitiveness depends on compliance with standards and um, it is very it is necessary. I think we all are aware of COVID and how COVID has really changed the landscape in which we do business. We can no longer do business as usual. And um, there are many issues that affect the long-term sustainability of our sector. And um, they range from the limited product innovation, poor standards within our small accommodation sector, issues with limited skills and training in the hospitality sector, and the limited services standards across the sector. So how have we responded to that? We have developed a number of standards over the last couple of decades. In fact, most of the sectors within the, ministry, within the industry, there are standards, there are nationally adopted standards for the tourism sector. And we have established a regime that will assist in regulating, um, monitoring um, standards of products and services within the tourism industry. And it is actually a very major policy initiative which forms part of our comprehensive um, tourism development legislation that we are actually in the process of formulating. It will be called the Tourism Development Act and the Ministry is actually scheduled to host a series of consultations or sensitization sessions on the importance of standards and the requirements to be compliant with this legislation. So it will center around building awareness among the operators on what the standards are and how they can meet the standards to be able to continue to operate within the tourism sector. So all of our operators will be required to meet the standards to be endorsed by the Ministry of Tourism so that they can operate 
um, within acceptable um, standards. So the new policy direction will ensure, of course, increased compliance with industry standards because we all want that level of compliance to ensure that the product meets a certain quality, the service that is offered as well is one that is second to none. And it will ensure, of course, that customer satisfaction is improved, the service quality delivery, and of course, confidence in the destination is also maintained. Of course, the incidences of visitor complaints will be kept at minimum, and of course, improving our destination rating as tourism. So several months ago as well, we collaborated with the Bureau of Standards in participating in a national quality dialogue. Um, and we are very grateful for that opportunity as well to build awareness among our operators on the importance of standards. They had the opportunity to really express what the issues are, the gaps are in the quality of service that's delivered and the products within the various sectors. We participated, in fact, we focused on a few sectors, but I think the intention is rather to ensure that this roadmap that was actually developed is really implemented. So we have developed a roadmap as a result of this um, quality dialogue, and we'll continue to use this roadmap, roadmap to address the gaps that have been identified within the various sectors. So the ministry is very aware that we cannot do this alone. Of course, it requires a partnership, and we are very grateful for that partnership that we have established over the last couple of decades. And we thank the Bureau of Standards, of course, in giving us the opportunity to partner with them. They are actually key in that process and the consultations that we'll be having over the next few weeks. So we are very grateful, and we thank you for that opportunity, and congratulate you on celebrating World Standards Day. Thank you. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Commerce, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs are pleased to join the members of the International Organization for Standards, the ISO, the International Electrotechnical Commission, and the International Telecommunication Union in celebrating World Standards Day on 14 October 2022. Annually on this day, the world celebrates the unifying construct of standardization, which empowers, augments, and impacts our way of life. Standards serve to minimize the contrast between developed and developing countries. Standards are the catalyst which opens up the opportunity for global trade to many of our MSMEs through adoption of good practices, Standards are the enabling measures which will aid St. Lucia in its pursuit towards achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As a small island developing state which wants to affirm its presence and participation on the global stage, we must place emphasis on our standards and our national quality infrastructure. The government of St. Lucia has placed the implementation of a national quality policy as priority on the agenda of its national development strategy. We recognize that while the administrative structure of government can create and implement policy to realize this, our culture must also be reflective of a people who embrace and engender the concept of standards to constantly improve our quality of life. It is with this global understanding that the theme for this year's World Standard Day is, and I quote, a shared vision for a better world, a global call to action, urging all societies and governments to play their part in protecting our beautiful planet and improving the lives and economic prospects of all. A good national quality infrastructure is characterized by the following components. Standards, quality promotion, conformity assessments, which includes testing, calibration, certification, and inspection, accreditation, and metrology. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, in its mission to contribute to the advancement of the national economy, supports sustainable development, promotes health and safety of consumers, protects the environment, and facilitates trade. Accordingly, 
The Bureau has been tasked with the management of the national quality infrastructure. In order for the quality infrastructure to be fully developed, there must be a close partnership between the public and private sectors. This partnership can only be effective if the national quality infrastructure is developed in a methodical and structured manner. This process involves establishing a national quality policy and constructing a national quality council comprising of key government and private sector stakeholders. As a custodian of St. Lucia's national quality infrastructure, the Bureau has demonstrated its commitment to quality by the continued certification to ISO 9001, the accreditation of our meteorology lab to ISO 17025, a first in the OECS, and the progress towards our accrediting our conformity assessment process to ISO 17020. With the aid of the Commonwealth Standards Network, we continue our participation in the new phase termed the Standards Partnership which aims at furthering strengthening trade through standards. In phases one and two of the Commonwealth Standards Network, St. Lucia augmented its standards portfolio by adopting standards linked to SDGs and national priorities. This has strengthened St. Lucia's ability to demonstrate the use of and conformity to international standards which will significantly improve our suite of demand-driven quality products for export. A critically important aspect of the work at the Bureau involves the implementation of the national quality policy to guide the development of St. Lucia's pathway to economic recovery as we continue to grapple with external shocks. The policy is designed to address short and long-term needs that will provide the appropriate mechanisms for assisting local entrepreneurs, including MSMEs, to access local, regional, and global markets, while also ensuring human, animal, plant health, as well as the safety and protection of the environment. The Bureau has embarked on several joint initiatives with other state entities, such as the Ministry of Commerce, Cannabis Task Force, our Ministry of Agriculture, National Agriculture Diagnostic Facility, the Safa Lewis Community College, Export St. Lucia, Ministry of Tourism, and the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, to name a few, all in an effort to build capacity, increase resilience, and create opportunities for our local entrepreneurs to tap and reach international markets that were previously unattainable. By providing standards and standards training, the Bureau aims to strengthen the national quality infrastructure by doing the following, using standards and measurement techniques to create better, safer, and more sustainable products, enhancing consumer protection, reducing technical barriers to trade, reducing the cost of international trade, helping our products and services become internationally competitive. Businesses will profit as standards assist in achieving economic advantages, improving manufacturing processes, saving time and money on research and development, reducing waste in materials and labor, reducing inventory cost, reducing overall cost of design and manufacturing, and improving competitiveness. Our people can be secure in knowing that the products and services we receive are safe and of required quality, adhere to country regulations, ensure sustainability and protection of the environment. I am certain that with the wide diversity of standards we are developing and adopting, we will see a marked improvement in the quality of life of our people. We now have standards dealing with almost every facet of society, the environment and the economy. Environmental standards dealing with our climate and sustainable development, such as guidelines for recreational water quality, environmental management systems. We have food safety and agricultural standards to enhance food, such as code of good agricultural practices for the production of fresh produce, code of practice 
packaging and transport of fresh fruits and vegetables, code of good agricultural practices for swine, standard for food and beverage preparation services. We have tourism standards to constantly improve our competitiveness, such as specification for tourist accommodation, general requirements and hotel requirements, standard for water-based tourism. As our government seeks to ensure relevant and innovative policies of socio-economic importance, we will be adopting a variety of cannabis standards from the American Society of Technology and Materials to assist in developing the cannabis industry. Very soon, we will have our own suite of national cannabis standards. I call on all citizens. We are all stakeholders in the economy, society and environment of St. Lucia. We should all participate through the public comment stage of the standardization process in an effort to create and maintain greater quality outcomes for all. I wish to extend sincere thanks to the people of St. Lucia and the volunteers on the technical committees who have helped develop and shape national standards. Let me therefore wish you a happy World Standard Day 2022. I thank you. It is a great honor and pleasure for me to have the opportunity to sign this Memorandum of Understanding between the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development, and then we're housing the, NADA, the National Agriculture Diagnostic Facility. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Agriculture have had a very productive collaboration over the past years. Our partnership has been focusing on improving agricultural research and technology to expand food production and productivity, critical areas which are necessary in meeting the requirements of international markets, as well as the needs of our stakeholders, whether they be agro-processors, farmers, or exporters. Through this MOU, we reaffirm this partnership with modalities of cooperation and types of activities to include producing and disseminating analytical work, implementing capacity building initiatives, information sharing and exploring the potential of co-financing of programs and projects where feasible and appropriate. We will continue to build on our respective strengths and comparative advantages to build synergies and complement each other's strategic work programs, especially in the following areas promotion of standards, laboratory quality management, food safety, pest and disease surveillance, market access, metrology services. I am confident that the analytical diagnostic and capacity development work of the National Diagnostic Facility complements the programs of the St. Lucia Bureau Standards, not only in supporting the work of agro-processors, farmers and other stakeholders in meeting market requirements during trade, but also in promoting the overall health and safety of our nation. I would like on behalf of my minister and peers, take this opportunity to again thank the director of, of the Bureau of Standards, Mr. Vernie Manuel and his team at the SLBS for their commitment in strengthening our collaboration. I thank you and I wish you also a happy International Standards Day. It is extremely important and, and for us that today, World International World Standards Day, that you have the Ministry of Agriculture signing an MOU with the Bureau, because 
most of you may not know, but last year, it, last year, um, when we started going through the budget process, we had to impress upon our Minister of Finance and Prime Minister that we needed funding for the diagnostic lab. And that was so because when I sat with the director of Export St. Lucia, uh, Ms. Daniel, um, we, we felt it was critical that our exporters had items for testing and we knew they were spending quite a bit of money sending these items, our manufacturers were spending quite a bit of money sending their items overseas for testing. And I felt it was important that we had invested, again through the Ministry of Commerce and Ministry of Agriculture, a few years ago we invested in ensuring that we had um, a lab. And there we had the building there, and we were told that it was not operating at the level that we wanted. So our Prime Minister heard our plea, and we had some half a million dollars assigned in the budget to cause the lab to be operational. So it is very important that today, on World Standards Day, we are signing this MOU so our farmers could benefit, our manufacturers could benefit, our small business persons exporting um, could benefit. Um, when we look at the work that is happening at the Bureau, and I see the head of metrology here, when I visited the diagnostic lab, um, I complained that our space at, me, at the Bureau did not have enough space at, at the center, so we will negotiate that on a, at a different level. But I am pleased, when I walked around the lab, I must tell you that I was pleased that we had young St. Lucians who were ready and able to operate and do the testing that we require. I think that we have to use this moment to tell the world, tell the farmers what we can do for them, because I know there are challenges on the ground that we need testing, we need services. And Ministry of Agriculture, you need to tell the farmers that you are ready. You are ready to serve them. And I am pleased as well to tell our exporters that now your government have placed this money there to operationalize the lab and we are ready to test some of the products that you have for export. So with these viewers, I want to congratulate um, the staff, the director, the board members, the volunteers, the, and the staff of the Bureau for the excellent work that you're doing and, the, and for them to understand the importance of that work in the economic development of our country. I also want to thank the other institutions here, the Ministry of Tourism and the work that you're doing in terms of bringing standards and improving our tourism product the Ministry of Agriculture and the work that you are doing in terms of ensuring that our farmers are again up to standard and export St. Lucia, ensuring that we open the markets so that the goods that we produce here in St. Lucia are receiving the, the market access that is so critical for us. So all in all, I want to say thank you on behalf of our Prime Minister and our Cabinet of Ministers for the work that you're doing on the ground. Thank you, thank you, thank you.